Our next speaker, Eugene Kaspersky, is a world-renowned cybersecurity expert. He is the co-founder and chief executive officer of Kaspersky, the world's largest privately held vendor endpoint protection and cybersecurity solution. Eugene's curiosity and passion for computer technology drove him to start analyzing malicious programs and developing disinfection technologies around them. The exotic exotic collection of antivirus software it created into the database was founded the company Kaspersky. Kaspersky was originally founded by Eugene in, 19, in two, 1997, and in 2007, he was named Chief Executive Officer. Please welcome G, Eugene Kaspersky with a warm welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Do you have a clicker? There you go. Okay. Uh, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, sir, I've work, been working in the cybersecurity industry for about 30 years. Uh, I remember the old times uh, when the computer malware, computer viruses, uh, they were not really important. Uh, then the problem became more visible, and now it is one of the largest uh, problems. Uh, and uh, actually, speaking about the, uh, the things which we see right now, uh, I will say that we are entering the cyber age. Uh, the cyber technologists, they do the world better. So if you remember the world five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, it was different. And I believe that in five, 10 years from now, the world will be different as well. But unfortunately, uh, we see the problems. The problems with cybersecurity, the barriers uh, which stops us from entering the cyber age. Uh, and the major problems are, first of all, that the cyber crime, uh, the cyber threats, they're getting much more complicated, more professional than before. Uh, and second, the attacks, they're slowly shifting to the direction of industrial systems. Uh, so, few numbers. Uh, first of all, the number of attacks are growing very fast. So this is the data from my lab. And now, every day, we collect about 400,000 new, unique, malicious applications. For Microsoft Windows, for Linux, Android, for many other operating systems, uh, scripts, uh, documents, it's about 400,000 new, malicious applications, which we never saw before. Uh, well, uh, if, by the way, if you want to learn more about this data, uh, there is a URL at the bottom right corner of my slide and a QR code. So make pictures and follow these links. Uh, so uh, all this malware, uh, where is coming from? Uh, well, the attribution in cyberspace is still very tricky. Sometimes we can point a finger to the actors, sometimes not. Uh, but in many cases, we can detect the language uh, the bad guys are speaking. So uh, the malware mostly speaks Chinese, simplified Chinese. We can listen. We see the text which are left in the, in the code. Uh, then there are many other languages, broken English, Russian, uh, native English, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, sometimes Arabic, uh, many, many other languages. Uh, and unfortunately, there are many of these actors, they learn, they exchange information, uh, they are uh, getting more smart, unfortunately, and they create more and more sophisticated malware. So, the number of, uh, I can confirm the numbers from a pre previous speaker. Uh, the number of highly complicated and professional attacks is growing very, very fast. Uh, like say, 10 years ago, I will say that the highly complicated, highly complicated threats, that's only the state-sponsored espionage tools. And the cybercrime is not really complicated, it's not really important comparing to these ones. And starting from 2015, after the Carbonac case, if you remember the Carbonac cyber gang, the cybercrime came to the level of the highly professional state-sponsored operations. As a complicated attacks, 
which are able to hack even very well protected enterprise. Uh, so now we uh, observe about 900 incidents, projects. Uh, most probably there are same actors behind some of these projects uh, because they, again attribution in cyberspace is tricky. Uh, but we can see what this uh, malware is doing and which language they are after. So this malware are speaking. So out of these 900 uh, different projects, about 80% it's a state-sponsored espionage tools, or maybe the private espionage tools, uh, and about 20% that's a cyber crime. Uh, financial crime, uh, ransomware, and other types of the of their criminal businesses. Uh, which language they speak? Uh, the espionage speaks mostly the native English, native Russian, and simplified Chinese. Uh, the professional cyber crime speaks mostly Russian, Chinese, and other languages as well. Uh, the good question is, who these guys are? Um, well, typically we know these people. Uh, we see the pictures, we see the faces when they are arrested. And I have just one example. Uh, this is the Revil cyber gang or ransomware evil, um, which are responsible uh, for many attacks, ransom attacks, including the colonial pipeline attack. Uh, if you remember that it, it's very well known case, then the pipeline was hacked uh, and the uh, oil prices they got a little bit up because of this. Uh, so that was a Russian based uh, cyber gang and they were arrested in November last year. Uh, so if you want to know who they are, here are the pictures. So they are engineers, unfortunately, the engineers which go to the wrong direction, they choose the wrong way. Uh, and unfortunately, there are many, many others which are still in business. Uh, how to protect from this kind of the attacks? Uh, well, actually, there are technologies, there are products uh, which are based on the multi-layered uh, protection, uh, having the XDR combining the different uh, sensors into the same knowledge base. Uh, there are behavior uh, control systems, the machine learning system to monitor the endpoint behavior, the network behavior. Uh, and uh, actually this uh, security is getting more and more complicated. Uh, to manage that is getting more expensive. Uh, so I think that the main way, the main strategy of cybersecurity vendors have to be to optimize it and to make it easy to use for small and medium businesses to have it as simple as it possible and to make even uh, able to manage it remotely to provide the managed services for the small businesses. For enterprises, have it simple, uh, but for the big enterprises which have their own security teams, uh, it's combined with all these tools and threat intelligence. And I want to highlight threat intelligence by the separate slide. Uh, that's a threat intelligence service. Uh, actually, that's a framework for cybersecurity experts. And my experts, they use this tool. Uh, so they have uh, access, it gives access to our internals, to our technologies which we have to analyze malicious code. Uh, so it uh, has a connection to our database of uh, cloud security knowledge base. Uh, it has their own, their uh, attribution engine, uh, which is in-house technology. Uh, it has uh, the uh, virtual machines, it has the uh, emulation, and it reports everything which we know about this particular malicious code. Uh, so this is a very powerful tool uh, to analyze the code. So actually for the companies, for the enterprises, uh, which have their own cybersecurity teams, I think it's a very, very right service. Uh, it's available online. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, uh, the highly professional tools, highly prof sorry, highly professional criminal gangs. Uh, we are shifting to uh, who are the uh, victims uh, of these highly professional attacks. And according to our data, unfortunately, we see more and more requests from industrial sector. Uh, so actually, this data is not uh, 
uh, available public uh, at the moment. Actually, we are going to publish this data this week, or maybe today. Uh, so we have reports from our uh, customers, from our partners, and we see that during last years, the number of attacks on industrial sector is growing very, very fast. Uh, so in 2020, we had about just 22% of, of the victims of the attacks they were from industrial sector. And last year, it grew by 8% to 30%. So about one third of the attacks, of the reports from uh, the uh, victims of the hackers' attacks, they were from industrial sector. Uh, once again, we are going to publish this report this week, so if you want to learn more, uh, please wait. Uh, so, how to protect uh, the uh, industrial sector? Yes, there are products and technologies uh, to protect uh, uh, SCADA systems uh, with their endpoint and network security, uh, which are adapted to the industrial needs, uh, which are optimized for SCADA use, uh, and uh, we see also, the behavior of the malicious code in the industrial networks, and we see the PLCs, the controllers, and we check that everything is okay with that. Uh, yes, it works, but unfortunately, sometimes the risks are very high. Uh, if uh, it's expensive systems, or if it's infrastructure, or critical infrastructure, the cost of attack could be too high. Uh, the damage sometimes is unpredictable, especially if we speak about the, um, the energy sector, the power grid, uh, the water supply, the urban facilities. Uh, the damage from the hackers attack, from a professional hackers attack, is unpredictable. Uh, so unfortunately, the cybersecurity solutions, they don't cover the risks. They don't balance that. Uh, so, I believe that the next step is shifting from cybersecurity to cyber immunity to build systems which are secure by design. Uh, what's that secure by design? What's that cyber immunity? My definition of immunity is the system is immune if the cost of the attack, investment into attack, is more than possible damage. So if you, were, if you have $1 billion facilities, the hackers have invest more than $1 billion to make their successful attack. So it's negative return on investment. So if we build a system which is more expensive to hack than possible damage, I guess it's immune. Can we do that? Well, I have no idea how to build it on the top of the already known operating systems, uh, Microsoft Windows, Linux, others. Uh, but we have uh, the immune operating system, which are based on a completely different architecture. So it's a microkernel architecture. Actually, that's not new. The news is that all the components of the system, they're isolated and they speak to each other only through the security layer. And security layer checks their permissions. So actually, this is permission-based security. Uh, so every piece of the system is isolated, and the security layer checks everything which is going on in the system. Uh, in short, if you're a calculator, don't ask about internet. You can only calculate, you can have access only to the keyboard and to the screen. If you are responsible for the turbine, you have access only to turbine, not to the keyboard, not to the screen. Um, so this every piece of this system is, uh, uh, every behavior for every piece of the system is prescribed, uh, and the system works in the same way as it have to do. Uh, actually, it's not, uh, it's not much flexible, it's not much functional like uh, traditional systems, but it's good enough uh, for Internet of Things. Uh, so, if uh, one of the components of the system is compromised, the architecture of the system doesn't let the malicious code to get through. Uh, comparing to the traditional operating systems, if one piece is infected, it can 
get in some way to the rest of the system. Uh, so this guarantees that the system is uh, immune. And once again, it's not as functional as Microsoft Windows. It's not to replace Microsoft Windows. It's not to replace uh, the Mac OS. Uh, it's good enough for Internet of Things. Uh, it's ready to use in critical infrastructure. And we have our very first uh, products with our partners. Actually, it's not our products. It's our products with our partners, uh, which guarantee unhackable products. Uh, we have a thin clients, we have an industrial gateway, and we have an IoT gateway, uh, which are based on the immune platform, which are secure by design. Uh, and uh, actually, we are looking for more partners uh, to build more industrial or home devices, uh, office devices, based on the immunity platform. Uh, so welcome to JITEX. So hall one, uh, we have a stand and please learn more. Uh, we are ready for part uh, partnership uh, with uh, IoT uh, providers, uh, IoT vendors. So I believe that the future of this cyber world will be based on cyber immunity. Without cyber immunity, we are not able to enter the cyber age. Uh, so welcome to JITEX to learn more and Thank you. Any question? Uh, my name is Zeki Al Khatar, IT consultant at Smart Orbit. Thank you uh, very much for your speech. Uh, I have a quick, a quick uh, general question. Uh, in your mind, uh, what do you think the best uh, cybersecurity awareness that should be given to the newly joined employee in any organization? Definitely. And uh, it's not only to employees. Uh, actually, if the cybersecurity awareness, uh, um, we have teach our kids with that. So uh, we have the education classes and trainings, uh, starting from kids to the CEOs of companies. For kids, we have uh, books about cybersecurity. Well, some funny books with uh, pictures. For students, we have uh, programs, uh, the cybersecurity trainings. For employees, we have uh, cybersecurity trainings for employees. Uh, for the big bosses, which don't typically don't have time, uh, we have a game. It's like a monopoly game. Uh, but simulates the enterprise, uh, and you're under attack, uh, you have options, you have time, and you have budget. And you have to find the maximum, the optimal way how to survive, how to protect your enterprise from the attack. So I completely agree that everyone has had some necessary level of cybersecurity awareness, and we have the education training programs for all the types of the audience from kids to presidents. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Shukram. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I think you summed it up. Security by design. Absolutely. Yes. This is the way. <laughs> <laughs>